read better books right. through cultural gatekeepers. Uh, and I certainly make no case for the genius of individual works I read. I was a nut right. on historical novels, as was the Book of the Month Club. I right. probably read every novel written by John Hershey and James mm -hmm. Michener, and even Howard Fast, who wasn't a Book of the Month Club because right. of his leftist right. past. Right. But I think the point that the highbrows missed about middlebrow culture was this. It was never an end in itself, really, what parents like mine, and also immigrant yeah. parents, who mine mm -hmm. weren't, wanted was they wanted these books so certified by right. by, some so, by somebody. Yeah. They, wanted, they wanted their children to have exposure to some things that they, growing up poor, had, right. had exposure what to. What did your parents do? Uh, my father was an accountant. My mother mm -hmm. was, was customary in the 1950s, was a housewife. Uh, and then you went to Michigan State in the, the mid-60s. And mm -hmm. what, um, you know, what, what was that experience and what do you see missing now in <laughs> well, early intellectual life? I am, I am a bad example of what college can do for people mm -hmm. because I wanted to be a newspaper reporter. Mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't without a college degree. So I went to Michigan mm -hmm. State at the time because it had something called an honors college which allowed you to take all of the credits that you wanted. And I graduated in two and a half years. I knew I was going to become mm -hmm. a dropout. I just didn't want to okay. be, in, I'm a classic example of someone mm -hmm. who was too young to benefit from a so college what education. Kinds of, what kinds of uh, courses did you take at? Uh, well, I took whatever I wanted to and some of it turned out to be useful. I took Russian, for instance, mm -hmm. because I, I wanted a language with a literature and as, as life would have it, after I became a reporter for the Washington Post, uh, I married the Post Moscow correspondent, mm -hmm. went to Moscow from 1969 to almost 1972, wrote my first book there, and I had really learned a lot of Russian in college and was able to learn it very mm -hmm. fast while I was over there as a result. Mm -hmm. I had a kind of dilettante education, mm -hmm. uh, which, which I later had to spend a lot of time remedying. Right. For, for instance, I went through college taking almost no economics and no science because mm -hmm. Michigan State allowed me to do it. Right. Uh, well, later when I became a reporter, I realized that I didn't know very much so about science. So are you in favor of uh, core curricula? Yes, absolutely. And, absolutely. Really? Oh. Nobody, should, nobody should be allowed to just choose their own college courses the way I was. What is, what's the uh, nature here of, uh, in, a, in a kind of political sense, uh, you know, you, you talk a lot, nobody should be allowed to opt out of vaccines. Which and there's some public health concerns there, where if you know if not enough people do it, then it doesn't oh, I work. Didn't, I didn't but, say nobody. I said that the presumption okay. should be, be it should yeah. be hard. Okay. It should be hard to but do. But then, what about something like you you, you mentioned national history standards? Um, you know, what what's the role of of a parent or a group in choosing an education that expresses what they want their child to know or learn or be exposed to, or in a college? I mean, at what level? Because one of the things that I I found. Both interesting and kind of off-putting. You know, you, you talk a lot about Richard Hofstadter, mm -hmm. who was certainly one of the major, major historians of the 60s as you were coming into your intellectual uh, moment, right? Um, I was thinking about another guy, Arthur E. Kirch, uh, who wrote a great book called The Decline of American Liberalism in 1955, and he lived until a few years ago, but uh, an interesting critic. He always talked about American history as uh, cycles of centralization versus decentralization. And Part of my take on your book seems that you are more fond of centralization of knowledge of certain types of cores, whether it's knowledge or experts or whatever, and you know that we're in a moment of decentralization where power is leaching out from traditional sources of power, whether it's a doctor, a lawyer, a stockbroker, a car dealer, you know, it, and you seem uncomfortable with that on some level. And one of the questions that I had coming out of this was, you know, what, what's, the, what's the role of individual choice or, or at what point does choice get made in your system? Uh, well, choice, choice is beyond. I think that, that most, most of us could agree that there is a common core in any society of knowledge that everybody should have. And by a common core, uh, there has to, by def almost by definition, be not centralization, but, but for example, we have local control of schools. Mm -hmm. But what would be very useful well, we is don't, to have... Well, because actually uh, parents don't have any control over schools uh, other than by how they, where that, they move. That's not true. Local school boards have a huge amount to do with what's taught in schools. Oh, no, no, I agree with that completely. And, and they I'm are talking, parents. No, but no. No, but they do not represent parents. Most boards, most boards represent teachers, or they are. It's a small group of people. 
Okay, well, we, I, we don't have time to get into an okay. argument about that, but I would, I would argue very strongly against that. But individual parents, if they want to, can homeschool their children. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's a very good idea. What parents can do is always, as my parents did, they can always challenge. If they don't agree with what the school is teaching, mm -hmm. they can always challenge, which is a lot better. I can't imagine anything worse than a nation of homeschooled kids subject only to their parents' opinion, and I would include myself and, and you in I that. But you can, for example. I don't even, I'm not even comfortable I with went, my opinion. I went to Catholic school uh, for the first eight years of my education. But uh, my mother, who is the Catholic in the family, I was, it never made any sense to me. And I would come home and I would say, you know, how can there be three persons in one God? And she would say, a oh. mystery. she would say, no, no. What she would say was, you don't have to believe everything the nuns okay. say, right. which is about the most subversive thing that a parent sure. can say to a child. This idea that what schools teach, whether they're public or private schools, is the be all end all. This is one right. of the reasons that I talk about the decline of conversation. What parents say to their children about challenging what's being taught them uh, is extremely important from whatever perspective. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have commonly accepted standards for certain kinds of things. That for example, that for example, a third of American schools informally don't talk about human evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, this is ridiculous. What do you mean it's not it's not written down but for example minnesota which is a great state gets a b grade from the fordham foundation which is a science research organization right. about evolution because while it teaches about evolution up to man it doesn't talk about human evolution right. at all because that's too controversial mm -hmm. this shouldn't be anybody who wants to send their kid to a public school and doesn't want to pay for it there are certain things to do with science with american mm -hmm. history that 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 people on the right and the left can agree on. What we have now is a kind of veto power in many mm -hmm. local areas over things that often for religious reasons are considered right. too controversial but to isn't teach. That, I mean, isn't that, uh, you know, there's any number of things that my kids get sent home from their public schools which I find objectionable, and why should I, as a parent, have to constantly be uh, petitioning a school that is supposed to be doing 